Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, less knife, more cowbell. Now, this is a knife making channel, but today, no knives. We're going to make a cowbell. Now, as my longtime viewers know, every now and then I like to do other random stuff. You know, the skills that you accumulate as a knife maker can really translate into all kinds of other cool projects. So I took up drumming recently and decided, hey, more cowbell. Now, I started this project by driving over to Guitar Center with a micrometer and a ruler and measuring the LP Black Beauty, which is pretty much the gold standard for cowbells. So mine will be roughly based on that design. The Black Beauty came in at 58 thousandths thick, which is basically 14 gauge steel. You can buy 14 gauge mild steel at Home Depot or whatever, so getting the material is really easy. So after measuring everything, I spent, I have to say, kind of an excessive amount of time dicking around with Fusion 360, which is a CAD CAM program. I was trying to get all the dimensions right, but finally I just drew the pattern out on paper and that worked out a lot better. There are three main construction approaches that LP, the maker of the Black Beauty Cowbell, uses to make cowbells. If you want to see a good video about it, I'll link to it in the description. There's a one-piece version that's folded together, sort of an origami type thing. Then there's a three-piece version that's lap welded down the seams and then has a welded top. Then there's a salsa type that's butt welded down the sides and then has a welded top. Now, my thinking is that the butt welded type will ring more and have more highs, whereas the lap welds will absorb more of the vibration and give you more of a clanky, thuddy type sound. But that's just a guess. I want that nice Mississippi Queen clanky thuddy type thing, so I'm going with the three-piece lap weld. By the way, I want to make clear up front that I have really no particular knowledge about cowbells, percussion, sheet metal work, or much of anything else involved in this build. Now, generally I do projects where I have a certain amount of expertise uh, on the subject, but this ain't one of them. You're basically just watching me figure this thing out on the fly. A little cleanup on the belt grinder. Then I'll bludgeon them to shape in my post leg vise. I'm just tappy tapping here so I don't overshoot too much. As you can see, the tabs on the sides are tapered a little. Once those are shaped, I'll beat an arch into them. If I were a real sheet metal worker, I'd do this on an English wheel or a pneumatic planishing hammer or something like that. But instead, I'll grind a little hollow into a chunk of scrap wood and then thrash on them with the hammer until I've got an arch. To the extent that I'm trying to teach any sort of grandiose lesson in these videos, it's that whether you have a bunch of fancy tools exclusively built for the task at hand, or a bunch of rusty wrenches you inherited from grandpa, you can usually find a way to make almost anything if you show a little ingenuity. Always nice to have great tools, but you don't need them. So, fair amount of fussing around with the hammer and anvil is required to get everything lined up right so that the halves fit relatively tightly. I don't want anything rattling around in there.
then it's over to the welder. I'm what you might call a desperation welder, meaning that I weld things only if there's no other alternative. I'm MIG welding here with flux core wire, which is really not ideal for, well, anything actually, but especially not sheet metal. As anticipated, the welds come out as things of sublime beauty. But look, they'll hold up and that's all I'm looking for. After the welds, it's over to the belt grinder to even things up and knock as much of the ugly off of here as I can. It's a little bit of a lipstick on a pig exercise, but hey. Then I'll mark out the cap on a piece of scrap and trim it on the belt grinder. more welding of nuclear power plant quality, and then it's back to the belt grinder for a little more cleanup. Most cowbells have simple mounting straps, sort of a U-shaped strap with a little diamond cut out of it and then this eye bolt that sort of cranks it onto the mount. But the fancier ones have a vice type mount. Since that plays more to my strengths as a metal worker and because I naturally have contempt for all things sheet metal, I'll gild the lily here and machine them. I'll blast away on the mill, squaring off this chunk of steel, chopping it in half to make the top and bottom of the vise and then set it up in a toolmaker's vise at a 45 degree angle. An aperture that will work with both 3 8 and half inch mounts will need to be about 3 8 of an inch or 375 thou per side. So I'll just mill down exactly that distance and we should be good to go. Now stack them up and drill holes. The top will be quarter inch clearance holes and then the bottom will be drilled at 201 thou, ready to be tapped for quarter 20 screws. And after tapping for those screws, that's really about it. Now I'll just screw everything together and weld the bottom piece of that vise onto the cowbell. Now the reason I'm screwing them together is just in case the bottom piece warps. I don't want these things displacing from each other, which would make it difficult to screw back together.
If I were a serious person, I'd powder coat this or Cerakote it or something like that, but I'm just going to whoop a little outdoor spray paint on it and call it a day. You know, I'm a big believer that you should just try stuff and see if you can figure it out, especially with the internet these days. It's amazing the kind of things that you can do with no prior knowledge. Now, this is the sort of project that you really don't save any money by doing it. Uh, you're just, uh, you know, basically having fun. So, uh, what can I say? I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. All right, see you soon, and next time we'll be back to working on knife projects. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!